I want you to take a look over here at this screen right now. We're on the front page of TFNN. Dot com. If you want to take a look down here, we do have our July Tiger Dollar Sale running right now. We have all bonuses doubled, and that ends July 22nd. Go ahead and click it over. You can get a 20, 30, or even 40% bonus on all your Tiger Dollars. These are applied to all your purchases, and they never expire and can be transferred. And it is no better time when you pick up a Tiger Dollar to come check out one of our great newsletters or services that we have. And I want to put one in the spotlight right now. This is the Tiger 4X Report by Teddy Kekstat. Now, if you want to get into Forex or anything the commodities are doing, this is going to be the thing for you. You've got to check it out. Go ahead and hit subscribe, and you wait for that whole thing to load, and it is $97, which is a steal. Now, if uh, it's your first time and you just want to check it out, you should, because we have a 30-day money-back guarantee um, on all of our newsletters. If it's your first time subscribing, we take a look here as well. We also have two, um, again, phenomenally priced webinars from Teddy. This is capitalized on time with calendar stock option spreads and then Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. You've got to check it out again. Get yourself some Tiger Dollars. Get yourself a webinar and the newsletter. Teddy Kekstat, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a nice cool day in Chicago. Oh, I'm so happy, Teddy. I'm so happy for you. It is, uh, what do we have right now? I think something like 90 degrees and muggy. I'm going to have to get up to Chicago sometime soon yeah, here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're 69. We had rain oh. last night. It's going to be like a high of 75 today. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying that because it's fantastic. Oh, for sure. So what are we looking at today? I'm curious to see what you're looking at with this market. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, crude, I think, is the uh, market that's on the move. We uh, touched the uh, upper end of our uh, critical resistance band last Friday. And uh, in the Tiger Forex report, we were calling for a profit-taking slide. We made lower move lows over the past few days on an intraday basis. Today, I think we're at, right now we're settling in the middle of the range. And I think you're probably going to see a lot of choppiness the rest of the day as far as it's concerned you know we don't have anything coming out until thursday's cpi number and uh it's very reflective in many of the currencies i mean we can talk about some currencies that are making some moves yeah. um but big ones like the euro um i mean right now today the it's got i think it doesn't even have a 20 pip range so i mean we're at eight almost nine o'clock Chicago time in the morning. And if you have a range that's, that's tight, all I can say is if you're trading the Euro US dollar today, you should be staying away. Definitely not trying to get into anything. That's for sure. Managing yep. a position perhaps. Yeah, fantastic. And I would love to hear your insight on some of the currency parents. And then also uh, if you have any insight or maybe perspective of numbers that come out on Thursday and kind of how the Fed will respond mm -hmm. to that. Okay, well, first of all, I think that that's a good lead up is the number. Uh, the yeah. CPI number on Thursday uh, comes out 7.30 Chicago time. And remember, we also have the CPI that's coming out for uh, Germany, not for the EU, but for Germany. Okay. So in that case, that could actually have a big bearing on the uh, the euro US dollar. Um, it's, you know, the, 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 the German economy is definitely something that is going to be driving most of the uh, economic action and what they're going to do as far as with the ECB and stuff like that. Right. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any retraction in the CPI there. I, I don't... I think there's probably not going to be much of a move there. Um, I think the biggest watch we have to see is what happens with us, you know, because going into this trade, if we stay, I mean, yesterday was not much wider of a range than we already have today. I mean, could we break out to the upside or downside today? Yeah, but I think it's going to be really tough. We're floating right below our monthly directional pivot level. And unless there's any reason to think that yields are going to pull back very strongly, which could give a boost to the euro US dollar, I think you're going to stay in this range trade and watch for the CPI number, which gets back to something I've been talking about with you and Tommy now for over a year and a half that yeah. the, the biggest days of the month now are your economic numbers. You know, you got unemployment once a month, you got CPI, you got PPI, PM, you know, like those numbers, it's very reflectionary of how it used to be, say, like back in the early 90s and stuff like that and late 80s. You know, like these numbers are very big when it comes to what's going to happen with the interest rate market. Now, I'm not talking about what the Fed's going to do. I'm talking about what the, how the market is going to react to these things, okay? Sure. So if CPI comes out, um, higher or unexpectedly 
higher than it should be, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have an issue with that. So as far as the actual number, and I can I can actually give this to you to look out for for the you know because even if you're trading equities, this is actually a big deal for the CPI. Totally. So you have C- CPI coming out on Thursday that you know the prior was 3.4 percent. And you're looking at it, the forecast staying basically the same. So if we see an uptick to 3.5, that's not necessarily going to cause a big gyration in the market. But if you see us up at like 3.7, 3.8, you know, something like that, that's going to most likely cause a uh, big sell-off in the uh, 30 year and the 10 year because that's inflationary and it also means that the market at least in the short run doesn't care what the fed's going to do it sees inflation it's going to it's going to dictate higher rates you know so um that could cause the euro us dollar then in that case to start to break out to the downside okay um which is then we may get some action. So I think on an intraday trade, if you're looking to, to like when to get some action, I would look for the number on Thursday to come out at 7.30 and then jump in sometime around like 8 to 8.30 after maybe when the s and is open and the equities market's open, you know, because give them a good 15 to 20 minutes to digest the equity opening and options opening. And then I think you'll see um, before the European close a good move for, for at least the American trade for the euro, US dollar especially. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, say the economic data comes out, let's say, good for Germany and then therefore, like, you know, the European Bank and Canada, mm-hmm. they start really lowering these rates. But we have to keep ours a little bit higher. What, how, what, what could you play around that, right? Because the dollar will stay much stronger relative to mm-hmm. that, right? So, right, right. So what would you look for to, like, set up something in there or uh, anything along those lines? You mean like to change the outlook? You mean as far as like, uh, you know, I mean, I, if if CPI came out drastically lower, you know, um, that yep. would be a situation where you would see probably a big bond rally and a 10 year rally. Um, the market would be pushing for that. That would make the Fed really happy. Um, right now, I'm, I could care less what Powell has to say. It, right. It's all it's all indicative of the economic numbers. You know, I like I mean, it, he, right now he's just filling time and speeches that he has to make. There's nothing new. There's nothing that's going to radically change any any outlook by them you know is it really is the numbers and we're coming into this buffer zone you know we're right in front of the election right if if they don't see an easing in cpi i mean so what oil is down a few bucks from its high from last week it's still pretty high yeah you know i mean gas is still four dollars a gallon you know i mean like <laughs> yeah. anyway you might want to look at it that's the case so you know i mean and i think that there was uh an interesting comment i heard you talking about consumerism earlier yeah. And by default, you know, um, unless you're getting free money, uh, you know, which some people are in this country, that's actually fueling a lot of where, where our numbers are coming from. The average American isn't the one spending the money because we're right. strapped. They're, they're, they're the ones making the choices. They're not getting <laughs> yes. the free cell phones. They're not getting the free health insurance. They're not getting a free <laughs> stay in a hotel, you know, with room service. You know, I mean, this is a fact. You know, yeah. we have people costing thousands of dollars a day, you know, that are, and there's millions of them now in our country. That's fueling these numbers. So they're artificial. The reality is when, when, how long can that last? You know, I mean, and when that really starts to seize up, I think you're going to see a market, you know, correction, which is overdue. We need to see it because it's artificially inflated. Yeah. Interesting point and just great commentary in general. Teddy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Folks, stay right there. I'll be right back.